Welcome on the second Sunday of Lent. Our opening hymn is number 401. Please stand as you're able. Let us praise God together in song. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Jesus said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways. Bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading is from Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him, appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abram, as for Sarah, your, Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her. And moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Let us read together the Psalm 22. Praise the Lord, you that fear him, and stand in awe of him. O offspring of Israel, all of you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow down before him. The kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over all nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. 
they shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. This is a reading from Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be with heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but there, where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adher adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us, as it is written. I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the bareness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all of this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But returning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And he called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels." The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways. Bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith. So we might embrace and hold fast to the unchangeable truth, which is your word. Jesus Christ, your Son. That's the collect that we just prayed. So welcome. You got the notice. You came to church. Because this is us, isn't it? We who have all gone astray and fallen short of the glory of God. We who come in the season of Lent to be penitent with broken and contrite hearts so that we might hold fast to the faith that we have the faith that is the Holy Word of God, the incarnate form, Jesus Christ, living in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what we proclaim as the church. The church. What a curious word. We've talked a lot about it already this morning, whether you were at 8 or at 9 o'clock class. We're going to talk a little more about that word church. I don't like the word church anymore because we misuse it. Most of the secular culture doesn't even understand what the word church refers to. Where do you go to church? As if the church was this building in which Jesus Christ died for the building. Jesus didn't die for no building. He died for people, right? So to call this the church is wrong. You can call it our temple. You can call it our house of worship. You can call it our house of prayer. You can call it where I gather on a Sunday morning with my friends and family. But we're misnomering it now when we actually call this building, this red carpet, the piano and organ, all of those are just things. They help us, I hope, <laughs> in our worship, but we don't need them. And we prove that every year just simply by going out to my ACA and all gathering around close tight together on the little covered picnic patio thing there at the park. And we worship around picnic tables. And it's glorious. 
I mean, the reason we do it every year is because we all love being out and surrounded by God's creation, right? But the church is the people of God. We are the church. So what does that say about us? When Paul is writing in Romans to a church under desperate times of persecution about all this stuff about faith versus law. Law is there to guide us. The law gives us boundaries to hopefully make living make sense, help us know how not to hurt each other. And that's God's law. Right? Ten Commandments come to mind. But that's also our secular law. Four-way stop. Everybody has to stop. Then the, we follow the proper procedures. So no one hopefully gets hurt, right? That's law. When we break the law, punishment or wrath, as uh, Paul calls it, happens. You run the red light, you get a ticket. That's the law. When we break fellowship with someone, thou shalt not murder. I mean, remember Jesus said, if you have that much hate towards someone in your heart that you cannot forgive them and reconcile that relationship, you've murdered them, even though you never touched them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So law brings wrath. It brings punishment, consequences. That is not the gift and grace of faith. God gave to his people, the church, the gift of grace and faith. And it is the gift of faith that you and I are to hold on to fast. Because everything in this world wants to take it away from us. Many of you probably have read in my Carla's Corner, you just know by being around me and my craziness, the last couple years, I got one more year of craziness in my life, and I'm in a doctoral program. And the whole thing is about cultivating church for the 21st century. It's like our bishop said, the church of the future does not look like the church of the past. And yet, we don't have a clear image of the future. <laughs> We never do, not of any future. It's that kind of faith that you and I need to hold on to as the body gathered together in Christ that will help us go forward into the future for whatever and however that future is going to be. In fact, this semester that I'm in, it's kind of interesting because the whole thing is specifically about cultivating church. <laughs> and we've read a whole lot of books in the last six weeks. One of them was particularly awful. Real, I mean, seriously, depressing. But for eight chapters, all we read were statistics about the decline of society and the demise of the church. Not a whole lot of hope. And yet, when I came back to class wanting to argue was, thanks for the statistics, like I didn't know that, uh, you know. We all can look around. We see the issues around us out in the globe and out in the church. We know them. But where was God? For eight chapters, he told us what human beings are doing to human beings. But he really didn't tell me, well, what is God doing in the midst of that? And that's my argument. See, as the church, we hold on to something more valuable and more precious than life itself. And that is the truth, that God is still working. God hasn't given up on this world that he created. God hasn't given up on the church that his son began through his disciples and their ministry. God still has work and purpose to have it go on to a future, a good future in Christ. 
And that's what we have to hold on to. But it is going to look different, possibly very different. And it's one of the things that my colleagues in my class, we've been kind of talking about what are the things that we claim in our, and we're from many, many different kinds of Christian denominations. We're not, there's only two Episcopalians in the whole class. But what are the things we keep all saying? Well, we've always done it that way because you're absolutely right. For the last 50 years of my existence, that's the way we've done it. But you know what? There were people around before me. Lots of people. And they did it different. The church has been around for centuries. It has not always been done <laughs> this way. And there have been times in our history as the church that we have recognized, whoa, things are a-changing. Not really sure where this is all going, but it's definitely changing. They're the people that Phyllis Tickle, may she rest in peace, fabulous theologian of the church, she said, every about 500 years, God has a rummage sale. She called it a fire sale, but that's what she's talking about. Meaning that, you know, we're, the, the, the people of God in the very beginning started house churches. We read that, the book of Acts, right? And it looked like this for a while. But you get into the 400s and the 500s, oh, well, we, we were a mess. Okay? Even in the twos and three hundreds, we had to have councils and things. We had to set up this, that, and the other. Then we finally get through that time of mess, if you will, and we've got, oh, now we're organized and we're going to live this way for a while. And then it would happen all over again. Lucky us. We're in the middle of the fire sale. Welcome. You and I get to be the participants in the rummage and getting rid of it. Getting rid of what clutters us. Getting rid of the things that God's like, that's not a part of the future, my friends. It worked for you for a while, but you got to set that aside now. God never asked for us to set aside the tenets of our faith. That's the core of who we are. To believe in his son, to believe that Jesus is his son. To receive the Holy Spirit working in our lives. But God never mandated, you must have red carpet on your altar and you must sit in red chairs. Think about that. Okay. He didn't even mandate that your priests have to look like this. So I think there's a lot of things that going forward as a church, please, I'm not changing my vestments tomorrow, but hope not. But I think there are things as the body of Christ, and not just here at St. Margaret's, but the whole church, we have to start really listening deep and hard for where God is going so that we can jump on with God and be about God's kingdom work. And it might not be always about being church in a beautiful temple or house of worship. Maybe God is calling us to do more church out there. But we got to listen, and we got to listen together to hear it, and to know where is God calling us, where is God sending us, and to take the risk to know that we're simply practicing being faithful. This isn't about getting anything perfect or right, especially the first time but to be open to that. Because last week we talked about that adversary. Jesus brings it up in the gospel today. He calls, tells Peter, Peter, you're being an adversary. You need to sit down, brother. This is where God is leading and God is doing a different thing. And no, it's not about me being crowned prince of the Jews or king of the Jews. God is doing something that requires my arrest, my murder, and my resurrection. Because my Father is always about life. Amen.
Together let us pray. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. Rushed for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. of the people with all our heart and with all our mind let us pray to the Lord saying Lord have mercy for the peace from above for the loving kindness of God and for the salvation of our souls let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for the peace of the world for the welfare of the Holy Church of God and for the unity of all peoples let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for our bishops Michael and Doug, and for Carla and Richard, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our President Joseph, our Governor Ron, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, which is nice today, and for abundance of the fruits and the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Margaret and all of the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. I know. Oh, sorry. Let's go to the second page, shall we? <laughs> I thought I skipped a bunch. <clears throat> For those on our parish prayer list, Anne, Adrian, Austin, Beatles, Carol, Cindy, Clark, Debbie, Emily, Frankie, Headley, Jamie, Jason, Jessica, Kimberly, Lacey, Larry and Liz, Larry, Matthew, Natasha, Sarah, Sopan, Sarome, Shirley, Yuri and Michael. For our Darcyan prayers, <clears throat> for our bishops, Douglas, and for our clergy, Carla and Richard, for the Venice Deanery, St. Andrews, Boca Grand, St. David's, Inglewood, Church of the Good Shepherd, Patagorda, St. Nathaniel's, Northport, St. James, Port Charlotte, Good Shepherd, Venice, and St. Mark's, Venice, and for the Angelican Cycle of Prayer in the Angelican Church of Tanzania, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our outreach ministry partners, St. Phil, excuse me, St. Wilfred's Food Pantry, Crafters for Hope, and Ashton Elementary School, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those serving in our military, Miguel, Charles, Travis, Matt, Nick, and Ian, we pray especially for Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, and Haiti. For all places and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without re reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord and now, in the communion of St. Margaret and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, to thee O Lord, Lord our God. God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share it with one another. morning again. Welcome to everyone. Um, following worship, uh, we have a beautiful coffee hour service laid out for us, so we want to invite all of you visitors and longtime uh, coming members to please grab a cup of coffee, grab some of those delicious goodies, um, and thank you to our hosts this morning. And, and let's get to know each other a little bit beyond, isn't it a lovely, gorgeous, gorgeous day in Southwest Florida? Because it is, but that's not me knowing you. That's me, the weather. So um, in our house of worship today, all baptized are welcome to come and to receive. If you come to my right, this is what we call the intinction or dipping side. And the way that works is I have the host. I dip it into the cup of Christ, and I will place the body and blood on your hand for you to receive. 
If at any time you want gluten-free instead of regular um, gluten toast, I guess, um, please just tell me we have gluten-free ready and available. <coughs> and this side is full communion in that I will hand you the body, um, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, then the chalice bearer will offer you the cup of Christ. You may receive the bread. When the cup comes to you, you may drink from the cup or acknowledge the cup. You may not intinct in the cup. So if you want intinction, you must come to my side. Um, totally fine to crisscross the aisles and then make your way back. So we thank you for that. Um, if you're not receiving this morning but you would like a blessing, if you'll come to the altar and do this, I will pray with you. Either side is appropriate. Outside in the uh, foyer, near, kind of on the side near the kitchen, there's a lovely wicker basket, a white wicker basket. In that is where we put um, items each month that go to the food pantry with our sister congregation, St. Wilfred. The items in those baskets are items that you cannot purchase with green, with stamps. Green stamps, we still call them green stamps. Food stamps, thank you. <laughs> Told you, I'm 50, get over it. Food stamps, with food stamps. And so, this month, our focus is on shampoo and conditioners. Just a reminder that those are the same size bottles that you buy to put in your shower. The travel size, we collect those all year round, and they go in the Resurrection House uh, basket. It's a little green or black basket in the thing down the hallway. But in the wicker basket, we're talking regular size shampoo and conditioner. There are people who like to condition their hair, too. Um, but we're collecting that, and then we will take all of that to... Uh, St. Wilfred's. I have to say I have no shampoo and conditioner. So, please, if, if you're so called, you're out shopping this week, think about that. Can you get it back to us? Because we want to make sure that we're getting that over there to St. Wilfred's. Um, we thank you for your support in that. And I have one other um, announcement that's hard for me to make. Um, many of you know longtime faithful members, Don and Carol Voss. You probably recognize they are not here and have not been here for a couple weeks. Don was diagnosed with terminal cancer. He's been undergoing treatment, but we're at the time now where treatment is not working. If you have intentions of seeing Don and spending some time with him or just want to send a card, you need to do it now. So it'd be a very short visit. As far as I know this morning, they're still in their apartment, which is where I'm going immediately after service. Um, please don't try to call. It just, phones don't work anymore. Carol can't hear you, <laughs> and Don cannot speak to be heard on the phone. So it's, phones are not an option. Texting is not an option because, again, Carol doesn't do, te doesn't do text, and she's not really good with email. So <laughs> it, it's a snail mail card, or just drop by and, and give them some love and then be on your way. Um, they don't need long visits, but I know there are some of you that Don would very much like to see, and you know who you are. So please pray about that. Um, Claire and I are the two that are uh, kind of overseeing um, pastoral care with the Voss family. So. I believe our senior warden has an announcement, or a couple announcements, actually. Good thing. So, uh, oh. just to say that, I mean, this came from, and I uh, call up Pastor Tony, and we'll see rewards and see how they do with that too, because that's who they are.
love you. <laughs> what a gracious gift. Um, and yeah, apparently EPN, Episcopal Parish Network, been around 40 years, but it's new to us. Like I had no idea. And I saw it and thought, this would be really great. We could network and learn how to do these new innovative things because other people are doing them. So um, what a great opportunity. I asked to go and the, I got the call and said, yeah, everything's fine, you can go. Okay, great. So I did all my registrations that I had to do. So I'm going. I leave the 5th to fly out to Houston. I'll be back Saturday the 9th. Um, but I had no idea that you guys did a secret collection uh, without the rector knowing. So thank you. God bless you. I will be sending a letter of thanks out uh, this week to everyone. So, um, yeah, what a nice surprise. Thank you, Penny. Bells? Yes. Not today. Um, walk in love as Christ loved us. He gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he gave thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Margaret and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance. Christ died for you. Feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the most precious food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Keep this your family, Lord, with your never-failing mercy. That relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, they may be upheld by your divine protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 